Hey Optimancers, Chris here. In my past couple videos, I've been talking about making a character that focuses on Armor of Agathis. I've talked about how to manipulate the damage type of the spell, how to draw melee attacks to trigger the damage portion of the spell, and how to maintain those temporary hit points so we can trigger the damage portion of the spell multiple times. Now, Armor of Agathis is not new to builds that I create. I've made many builds on this channel that have that spell, and I've talked about it with those builds many times. In fact, any of my builds that at least have a dip in Warlock almost certainly have Armor of Agathis. However, there are two times I've made builds on this channel that were intended to increase our odds at triggering the damage portion of Armor of Agathis. The first of these builds was an early build on this channel that I called the Eternal Cockroach. The Eternal Cockroach was primarily a defensive build, maximizing saving throws and armor class through a mix of Paladin, War Mage, College of Swords Bard, and a dip in Hexblade. I'll link the build up above, and I've seen this build in play a number of times now, and it really does work pretty well. The second of these builds was also quite a while ago. I did a series where I made builds for every subclass of wizard, and when I got to the Abjuration Wizard, I dipped a single level of Warlock for Armor of Agathis, then I combined Armor of Agathis with the Arcane Ward of the Abjuration Wizard, and then eventually Fire Shield to create a character that would enter melee and hopefully get attacked and deliver a lot of damage that way. That build was called the Armadillo, and reviewing that build, what I would probably change is that I really didn't do anything to really make the character an obvious melee target. Today, I am going to go to the Armor of Agatha as well a third time with a build I've been working on for a long time, or at least it's been on the back burners for a long time. What I've always noticed is that barbarians are pretty tanky. They don't do the most damage in the game, but they do pretty good damage, and they tend to get swarmed and then attacked countless times. Bit by bit, those heavy hit points combined with resistance through rage, they get whittled down, though the Barbarian is drawing massive numbers of enemy attacks in the process. I've always figured it would be really effective if a Barbarian could punish those attackers some way. It's taken quite a while to work this build into a form where I was happy with it. I think we're finally there, so today I'm presenting my Frostbane Barbarian build. First thing I want to do is explain how this build is going to work. We're going to start out as a regular Barbarian, doing the things you would expect a regular Barbarian to do including the big hit points combined with Rage. We're going to take some levels then in Clockwork Sorcerer. This is going to do three main things for us. First, it'll give us access to the Armor of Agatha spell. But secondly, it provides us metamagic, specifically the transmuted spell metamagic that allows us to change the damage type of our Armor of Agatha to avoid the resistance or immunity to cold damage. Finally, it's going to provide us the Bastion of Law trait, this feature allows us to reduce the damage we take. Bastion of Law plus Rage should allow our Armor of Agathis spell to be set off multiple times before going down. Finally, we want to draw those melee attacks. Being a raging, reckless attacking barbarian, it's going to do that. But then again, things like Armor of Agathis are a discouragement, so we are going to enhance that enemy manipulation in two additional ways. First, we're going to take Path of the Ancestral Guardian with our Barbarian levels. This will allow us to impose this advantage to a target we hit with an attack against any target other than us, as well as provide those other targets resistance to that damage. This makes it far less likely enemies are going to target our allies. Secondly, we're going to dip a couple Paladin levels. Since we're going to be raging in combat, this means we won't be able to cast spells or concentrate on spells. But what we can do is expand spell slots to smite enemies. Barbarian damage plus Paladin smite damage plus everything else should ideally counteract the hesitancy enemies might have to attack us when they realize they take damage for doing so. So let's get into how to make the Frostbane Barbarian. The race of our character is an Azamar. Just a quick rundown of the race and then I'll explain why I've chosen it. So we're humanoid, our size is medium, Speed is 30 feet, and Celestial Resistance gives us a resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. We have 60 feet of dark vision. Healing Hands allows us to heal a number of d4s equal to our proficiency bonus with our action once per long rest. Light Bearer gives us the Light Cantrip, and at level 3 we get Celestial Revelation. 
Radiant Consumption is tempting here, as it damages all creatures within 10 feet of us. However, Radiant Consumption will encourage creatures with both melee and ranged attacks to attack with their ranged attack. We don't want that. So we're selecting Radiant Soul. This gives us a bonus action fly speed and boosts up our damage for one minute using a bonus action to set up. So we aren't going to be a bear totem barbarian. That means we won't have resistance to anything but bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing when we're raging. But Celestial Resistance gives us two additional resistances, and Necrotic is a common type of damage for enemies to do. And some do Necrotic with their melee attacks. So this Celestial Resistance is a big factor. The second reason I've chosen this race is the ability to fly. Extra damage is nice, but mainly when we're raging, we can't cast the fly spell. So if we do need to enter melee with flying enemies, this gives us a way to do that. The Dark Vision, Healing Hands, and the Light Cantrip, they're just additional goodies. None of these were a major factor in choosing this race. Now, alternatively, any of the races that get a bonus action teleport are also really tempting, particularly the Shatter Kai, which get resistance to all damage after a teleport and always have resistance to necrotic damage. It's really about measuring the teleportation against the flight ability. It's a close call. And I think either selection is pretty strong. So if you prefer the Shadow Kai or it fits your concept better, then it is a strong selection. Moving on to ability scores, we're going to select the three plus ones with our race, and those are going to be in strength, constitution, and charisma. So we will be using a point by. So we will start with a 15 strength becomes a 16, a 12 dexterity, a 15 constitution becomes a 16, 8 intelligence, 8 wisdom, and 13 charisma becomes a 14. Now, if you wanted to, you could get that charisma to 16 by dumping dexterity and wisdom. But I just don't think we're focused enough on spell attacks with this character, nor spell DCs, to make that worth it. Our first five levels in this character is just going to be straight barbarian. One of the draws of the barbarian is they have the best hit points with d12 per level, which, when combined with a high constitution score, leaves us with a lot of hit points. We're proficient with light and medium armor and shields, as well as simple and martial weapons. I've selected perception and athletics as class skills, and you'll get two additional skills through your background, and for that, just take what you like. Rage is the most iconic ability of the Barbarian. We can rage as a bonus action, and while raging, as long as we aren't wearing heavy armor, we have advantage on strength checks and saving throws. We get a plus two damage to our strength-based attacks and resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. While raging, we can't cast spells or concentrate on them. We can, however, cast spells that don't require concentration and then rage afterwards, and those spells are going to remain. Armor of Agathus is one of those spells. Unarmored Defense gives an armor class of 10 plus our dexterity and constitution modifier when we aren't wearing armor. Because our dexterity score isn't very good, this isn't a good option for us we want to wear the best medium armor we can get. Half plate will get us to armor class 16, which isn't great, but you know what, it's not terrible. Now you might not get half plate right away, but at least get scale mail as soon as you can. And then I might wear a shield from levels one through three. Second level gives us reckless attack, allowing us to get advantage on our strength based attacks on our turn. However, when we do this, we give our enemies advantage to hit us. With a barbarian, you tend to get hit a lot. And then you rely on that resistance and high hit points to get you through. Danger Sense gives us advantage on most of our dexterity saving throws. It's a pretty decent ability, though we aren't proficient in dexterity saving throws. When we reach third level, we get three things. First, we get an additional rage per long rest. Secondly, assuming we're using Tasha's Cauldron of Everything optional class features, we get Primal Knowledge, which gives us an additional skill proficiency. I've chosen Intimidation. And then we get our Primal Path, and we'll be selecting Path of the Ancestral Guardian. This path gives us Ancestral Protectors. While raging, the first creature we hit with an attack on our turn has disadvantage on any attack against anyone but us. And if they hit a creature other than us with an attack, that target automatically has resistance to that damage. This lasts till the start of our next turn. Ancestral Protectors is just another way to encourage enemies to attack us instead of our allies. At 4th level, we're going to take the Great Weapon Master feat. This allows us to take a bonus action attack with our melee weapons whenever we score a critical hit, or we reduce a creature to 0 hit points. As a Barbarian with Reckless Attack, 
we have a better chance of triggering this bonus action attack since we're attacking with advantage that increases your chance of critical hits. This also gives us incentive to attack minions or heavily damaged enemies in order to improve our chances of dropping a creature to zero hit points. You won't get that bonus action attack every round, but I would think if we select our targets carefully, we might get half the time. In addition, before we make a melee attack with a heavy weapon, we can take a minus 5 penalty to the attack roll for a plus 10 damage bonus. This combines very well with Reckless Attack, which largely compensates for that minus 5 penalty. Now if we haven't been using a heavy weapon up to now, it's time to get one. I'm assuming a Maul for this particular build, but you know what, something like a Greatsword would give you the same damage if you prefer. 5th level provides us with two additional major features. Extra attack, of course, is huge, and it's nice to get it right at level 5. So many builds, either because of multiclassing or accessing this through Bard or Wizard, delay extra attack until level 6. And we also get fast movement at level 5. Extra movement speed on melee builds is extremely nice to have. Now that we're at 5th level, let's stop for a moment and look at our damage. As I mentioned, I would assume that bonus action attack maybe half the time. Without rage, it's 2d6 from our weapon. That's 7, plus 3 from our strength, that's 10, plus 10 more from Great Weapon Master, that's 20 damage per attack. Now I normally consider a 60% chance to hit with a plus 6 attack at level 5, but if we use Great Weapon Master, that drops to 35%. But then we apply advantage with Reckless Attack, and then we're up to 58%. So 58% chance to hit with Reckless, times 20, that's 11.6 per attack. Then we have a 10% chance of a critical with each attack, and with Reckless times 7 additional damage, that's 0.7. So that's 12.3 damage on average per attack. With extra attack, that's 24.6, and with maybe a bonus action attack half the time, that's 30.8. The baseline is just 16.5. Now this is the damage I would expect a character that is at least partially responsible for doing damage to do. It's based on a Warlock and Eldritch Blast using Hex and Agonizing Blast. So we are 87% over that baseline at this level. That is good damage. With Rage, it's actually 22 per attack, or 12.8 after adjusting for a chance to hit. That's 33.8. That's over double the baseline. That is terrific damage. We could also boost this a bit more with our Azamar Protector feature, which allows us to use a bonus action for those wings and fly speed, as well as adding 3 damage to the first hit on our turn. That damage is based on our proficiency bonus. Remember though, Rage also takes a bonus action to set up, so it's a bit harder to combine with Rage. I'm not going to worry about adding it to the DPR here, as our DPR numbers are pretty strong already. That's the thing about Barbarians. At level 5, they are dealing the damage. That doesn't last at higher levels, unfortunately, since the brutal critical feature that keeps coming up really doesn't add enough. So this is a great time for a Barbarian to multiclass, and we will be multiclassing into the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer. We're going to be taking this for the next 6 levels, which is going to take us to 11th level overall. Sorcerer, of course, is giving us fewer hit points per level with a d6, though we will start boosting those hit points with spells soon enough. Sorcerers are full spellcasters, with Charisma as their casting ability, which for us is a 14. That's not great, but not terrible. However, unlike clerics or wizards, our ability score doesn't affect the variety of spells we can have known to cast, and Clockwork Soul gives a ton of extras. And that is because of Clockwork Magic. This provides us two additional spells known at level 1, 3, and 5 in Sorcerer. Those spells are Alarm, Protection from Good and Evil, Aid, Lesser Restoration, Dispel Magic, and Protection from Energy. However, when we gain a level in Sorcerer, we can replace one of these spells with another spell from the same level, that's Abjuration or Transmutation, from the Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard spell lists. We are going to be making use of this. At level 1 in Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, we get Restore Balance. This allows us to use our reaction to remove advantage or disadvantage from a d20 roll being made by a creature we can see within 60 feet. We can use this a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus per long rest. Usually with Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, here's where I suggest using this feature to negate magic resistance, but in the case of the Frostbane Barbarian, I would recommend this feature to remove advantage from an attack against us, particularly if it's a ranged attack. 
Of course, one of the best features of a sorcerer is sorcery points. With six levels of sorcerer, we're going to have six sorcery points, and we can use them to gain additional spell slots. Alternatively, we can convert spell slots into sorcery points. At third level, we get another way to use sorcery points, and that's metamagic. We get two metamagic selections, and I'm recommending the extended spell and transmuted spell for this build. Extended spell allows us to spend a sorcery point to double the duration of a spell, and transmuted spell allows us to spend one sorcery point to change the damage type of a spell. Transmuted spell works well with Armor of Agathis. If you figure you're going to be facing cold immunity or resistance, like if you're fighting fiends of any kind, that's a good bet. Also, if you're in a snow, ice, or otherwise cold-themed adventure, same thing. Then you want to use transmuted spell to change the cold damage on your Armor of Agathis. Thunder is probably the best bet. When our character reaches 9th level, or 4th level in Sorcerer, we're going to pick up the Resilient Wisdom feat. Our Wisdom saves are terrible, and this is going to at least make them decent. I would love picking up the Sentinel feat here, but I think boosting our Wisdom saving throws is just something we have to do. At 5th level, we get Magical Guidance. This is another optional class feature from Tasha's. I assume we're getting it, but none of these optional class features are necessary for the build. In this case, it allows us to re-roll a failed ability check by spending a sorcery point. We might use this for a failed grapple check. But I don't expect to be using this feature a lot with this particular build. And at level 6, we get Bastion of Law. This allows us to spend up to 5 sorcery points to create a magical ward around our character represented by 1d8 per sorcery point spent. Then, until our next long rest, when we take damage, we can reduce that damage by expending one or more of those dice, and we reduce the damage taken by the amount rolled. Now, if you're making a Clockwork Sorcerer that's, you know, normal, then your sorcery points are probably better spent on metamagic. In our case, though, I think this is the strongest option. I mean, consider this. Let's say we have a third level of Armor of Agathis. That's 15 temporary hit points and delivering 15 damage when we're hit with a melee attack. So let's say, hypothetically, we're hit with an attack for, say, 32 points of piercing damage. With Rage, we could reduce that to 16, and our Armor of Agathis triggers, but it also goes down. But let's say we expand even one die. That's likely reducing the damage enough that the Armor of Agathis stays up to trigger a second time. Now, the way it will work is the damage will be reduced by Bastion of Law first before resistance is applied. The rules on damage resistance say it's applied after all other modifiers on damage. So the D8s or D8s rolled would be subtracted from the 32 damage and then it would be halved from the resistance. Just keep that in mind when using this feature. Okay, so let's talk about our spell selection. For cantrips, I've selected Blade Ward, Booming Blade, Green Flame Blade, Mage Hand, and Minor Illusion. Okay, so Blade Ward gives us the same resistances that we get for Raging. So why do we want this? Well, for when we're not Raging. If we get Swarmed, this might be a better action than attacking, honestly. And if our Armor of Agathis is up, maybe better than dodging too. Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade, honestly, I don't know how much we're really going to need these. Usually, I'd take the attack action, and then I'd get extra attack, even when I'm not raging. But you know what? You never know, and we have cantrips to spare. Speaking of cantrips to spare, Mage Hand and Minor Illusion, they're both good utility cantrips for just those situations. Okay, so let's move on to our first level spells. So, we will have Absorb Elements and Shield with our Sorcerer selections, and we're going to be changing our Clockwork Magic spells to Armor of Agathis and Long Strider. So, Absorb Elements and Shield. It's really the same thing as Blade Ward. Sometimes we're not going to be raging, and they're great defensive spells. Armor of Agathis, of course, we're going to be casting this with our highest level spell slots. And Long Strider. I really like this here. Long Strider gives us a 10 foot movement speed boost, and because it isn't concentration, it's going to remain even when we rage. With our Barbarian Improved Movement Speed, with Long Strider, that's a really solid 50 foot movement speed. And since our fly speed equals our walking speed, it's also a 50 foot fly speed when we use our Protector Azimar trait. Okay, so level 2 spells. We're going to be taking Mirror Image, Misty Step, and Web. And with our Clockwork Magic spells, we'll keep the Aid spell and pick up Pyrotechnics. Mirror Image, same as Shield and Absorb Elements. When we're not raging, we want good defense. Mirror Image, Absorb Elements, and Shield 
that's really good defense. Misty Step is a super useful teleport as a bonus action. This works well on marshals with strong attack action, allowing us to get where we need to be without sacrificing our attacks. And Web is a great control spell that remains pretty good at those higher levels. We're not concentrating on anything, so throwing down a web at the start of a combat where we won't be raging is a terrific round one action. With our clockwork magic spells, well, aid adds five additional maximum hit points to three creatures. This is going to cover a lot of the difference in hit points between sorcerer and barbarian. It's also going to help two other party members. Alternatively, you can cast it in combat and the target of the spell immediately has their current hit points increased by five. This can be really helpful if allies drop to zero hit points. Pyrotechnics requires either the right environment or a bit of setup, but you extinguish a non-magical flame and we can create a 20 foot radius of smoke that heavily obscures an area or fireworks that potentially blind every creature within 10 feet of the targeted flame. This spell can be especially effective if someone has blind sight and our character will eventually. And then our third level spells. We're gonna pick up Counterspell and Fireball with our Sorcerer selections. And we're just gonna keep our Clockwork, Dispel Magic, and Protection from Energy. Counterspell, of course, is a very potent spell. Keep in mind that if we're countering a spell of third level or lower, our casting ability score doesn't matter. But even if it's higher than third level, we still have a decent shot at it. Fireball is just a useful spell when you have a ton of creatures that are all huddled together. Fireball with the lower casting stat does very comparable damage to Fireball with a higher casting stat. The percentage difference just, it's extremely minor. Then Dispel Magic. Like with Counterspell, it's just a very useful spell. Just like with Counterspell, spells of third level or lower are automatically dispelled regardless of our Charisma score. And Protection from Energy is only our second concentration spell, so that concentration is available if we need it. The advantage of protection from energy over absorb elements is we should only need to cast it once for resistance that lasts round after round, and it's not eating up our reactions. That said, we only have three third level slots, and I would probably use all three for Armor of Agathis most of the time. At higher levels, that won't be the case, but at this point, that's what I'd be doing. If we can get just two instances of damage with a third level Armor of Agathis, that's 30 points of damage in a combat. And with a third level armor of Agathis, a second level aid, and 97 base hit points, that's effectively 117 hit points on an 11th level character. That's really strong. Notice though that the majority of the spells I've selected are for defense for when we're not raging. This is deliberate. With three rages per long rest, maybe we're raging every fight, but I think the odds that we have some fights without rage is pretty good and you'll be glad to boost defense in other ways when that happens. The three fights we do rage for though, those are the three fights we want a 15 point Armor of Agathis for. And with three third level spell slots, it works just perfectly. Basically, if we have Armor of Agathis up, that's when we rage. So let's see how our damage is doing at 11th level. Well, if we aren't raging, there's a fair chance we're using the web spell for control, though we aren't doing damage on the round we cast it. But after that, it's still 20 damage with our weapon, but assuming enemy armor class is increasing, our chance to hit has reduced to 51%. 51% chance to hit with Reckless times 20, that's 10.2. 10% chance of a critical with Reckless times 7 additional damage, that's 0.7. So each attack on average is doing 10.9 points of damage. With extra attack and some bonus action attacks, that's 27.25. The baseline here is 26.55, so in addition to some control with webs, we are still exceeding the baseline. With rage, it's 22 per attack, or 11.2 after adjusting for chance to hit, that's 29.8. Then let's assume two instances of armor vagathus damage, or 30 points, divided by 4, assuming a 4 round combat, that's another 7.5 we're adding. So now our DPR while raging and using Armor of Agathis is 37.3. That's 40% over the baseline. It's not bad damage, but we would like to get that above 50%. 11th level is one of those levels where barbarians tend to struggle a bit. But let's see what we can do to take that damage higher as we take this character to level 17 when our baseline jumps up again. First thing we're going to do is we're going to multiclass into Paladin for two levels. 
This gives us pretty solid hit points with a d10 per level. Divine Sense is a pretty lackluster feature, but we can use it three times per long rest to detect celestial fiends or undead within 60 feet, not behind total cover. Lay on Hands will give us a bit more healing on top of our healing hands from Azamar. It's 10 points of healing, or expend 5 to remove diseases or neutralize poisons. And with our fighting style, we're going to take Blind Fighting. This is going to mix really nicely with Pyrotechnics. It also comes in handy against any kind of fog cloud or other heavy obscurement, especially for a melee character. And of course, Divine Smite. This allows us to expend spell slots to increase our damage by 2d8, plus 1d8 against fiends or undead, or if we expend a higher level spell slot. And you know what? We might expend a second level spell slot, you know, on occasion. Mainly, I'd be using this on critical hits. But you know what? If you want to get the attention of some enemies at the start of a combat, a couple smites might increase your damage enough to get them to start targeting you. For spell selection, I would take Heroism, just in case you get frightened. You know, nothing is more pathetic than a frightened barbarian, after all. Shield of Faith, again, just boosting defense for when we're not raging. And Bless. If Web isn't the right spell for concentration, Bless is almost always a decent cast. Three targets all get a d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. And you know what? We're probably a good target for this spell as one of those three. And then we're going to go back to Sorcerer for two more levels. At level eight, we're going to get an ability score improvement, and it's time to get our strength up. We're going to increase it right here to 18. The Sorcerer spells, we're going to choose our Fire Shield and Dimension Door, and the Clockwork Magic spells will keep freedom of movement, and we're going to swap Summon Construct for Polymorph. Okay, so Fire Shield. If we're going to make a character that entices enemies to attack us in melee, Fire Shield is a great addition. With a 10 minute duration and no concentration, we should be able to cast this outside of combat, and it's going to remain after we rage. In addition, it's going to give us yet another damage resistance, so bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, necrotic, radiant, and either fire or cold. That's a lot of resistances. And if a creature within 5 feet hits us with a melee attack, it's going to take 2d8 fire or cold damage, depending on what kind of resistance you have. Basically, if you have resistance to cold, it does fire damage, and if you have resistance to fire, it does cold damage. This spell is worth our fourth level slots. And since, unlike Armor of Agathis, they don't go down after taking damage, I would expect we would probably get a couple fights with a single casting. Dimension Door I would avoid casting unless it's exactly the spell I need. It's a decent range teleport that doesn't require line of sight, and you can bring along a passenger of your size or smaller. It's a really good spell, and sometimes it is exactly the spell you need. Freedom of Movement is a fairly good buff, and we could use it on ourselves. I normally wouldn't jump to this with my 4th level spell slots, but sometimes you have some idea of the challenges you're going to face, and in those cases we can have this up beforehand when we rage, allowing us to ignore attempts to slow us with magic, and easily escape attempts to grapple and restrain us. And then Polymorph. I mean, if you have a 4th level slot and you aren't raging, this is a good way to get a character who's almost at 0 hit points back in the fight. Usually Giant Ape is the go-to form, having the most hit points for the Polymorph spell. That gives us two more levels before level 17, and we're going to go back to Paladin for two more levels. We're going to get a Channel Divinity, and one way we can use it is to recover a spell slot. 17th level, it recovers a third level slot. Third level, we get Divine Health, which makes us immune to disease, and it's okay. Yeah, I find it doesn't come up all that much. And then we're going to choose an Oath. Our decision here, it's pretty open. We're not going to take enough levels in Paladin for it to make a big difference. I am thinking Conquest Paladin here. This gives us two Channel Divinity options. Conquering Presence is a good ability, but you know what? RDC just isn't that great. So for me, with this build, my Channel Divinity is going to Guided Strike. When we miss with an attack, we can expand our Channel Divinity to add a huge plus 10 to our result. This is almost always turning a miss into a hit. Interestingly, Conquest also gives us Armor of Agathis. So if we do go back to Sorcerer after level 17, and that's what I would do, then we could switch out our Armor of Agathis on Clockwork Magic for something else. We also pick up the Command Spell, which honestly with this build, I likely wouldn't use. At level 4 in Paladin, we get an Ability Score increase, and now we can get our Strength Score up to 20. And to get one more first level spell selection, I mean just pick what you like. I took Protection from Evil and Good, don't know if I'll ever be casting it. And that takes us to 17th level, and how are we doing? This is the final version of this character, and there is a link in the video description if you want to see this character sheet. 
Well, now we have eight sorcery points. That is enough for a fifth level Bastion of Law and three transmuted Armor of Agathis spells. Two fifth level spell slots for two fifth level Armor of Agathis spells, each providing 25 temporary hit points and doing 25 points of damage. We have three fourth level slots. I would guess two for Fire Shield and one for fourth level Armor of Agathis. So how's our damage doing? If you recall at level 11, we were just above baseline when we weren't raging and about 40% when we were. Well, if we aren't raging, we really haven't done much for our damage. Instead, we've added additional spells we can cast in combat. So cast a web, a blast, a fireball, or swing your maul. It's really a bit of this and a bit of that. But when we do swing our maul, how much damage are we doing? Well, our base damage is 22 now, since our strength is up to 20, and our chance to hit is back up to 58%. So 58% times 22, that's 12.8. 10% to crit, and we'll add a first level smite for 16 extra damage on a critical hit, or 1.6 per attack. Then extra attack and some bonus action attacks, and we're at 36. That is just over the baseline, right where we would expect to be, right where we were at 11th level. Now, how about when we're raging with Armor of Agathis and Fire Shield? Let's say we get the extra damage twice with each of them, though with Fire Shield, it could easily be more. With Rage, it's 24 damage per attack, or 13.9 after adjusting for chance to hit, and now we add crit damage and extra attack and some bonus action attacks, and we are at 38.75. Add in a couple of Armor of Agathis damages and a couple of Fire Shield damages, divided by four rounds per combat, and that adds 17 more damage per round or 55.8. Now, once per short rest, we're going to turn a miss into a hit using our Conquest Paladin Channel Divinity. That's 22 damage on average, divided by four combats and four rounds per combat, at least per short rest, and that's 1.4 more, which brings us to 57.2. Add six points from the Protector Azamar to three rounds of one combat for another 0.6. That brings us to 58.8. The baseline is 35.5, so we are now a solid 66% over, and we can increase that more by expending some smites. And we've taken that okay damage at level 11 and brought it into good damage by level 17. So this is a build I've literally had on the back burner for years now. Finally got it to where I think it works pretty well. So that's my Armor of Agathis concentrated build. I think it draws enemy attacks much better than the Armadillo build did, and it will hold that Armor of Agathis much better than the Eternal Cockroach did all while delivering solid damage across all levels, even decent damage when not raging or using Armor of Agathis. This takes your standard melee barbarian that gets swarmed and then punishes that swarm for their attacks. I hope you enjoyed the Frostbane Barbarian. And until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.